Today we'll be tackling this particular neon lines loop. It's something that I've been trying to create for a very long time, but I've kept failing because I couldn't figure a few things out. However, now that I've figured everything out, we're going to be tackling this head on. It's actually very simple, but there's a few tricks that's necessary to get this working. And with that, let's actually begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we're going to actually use the default cube. So let's press tab to go into edit mode and then press three to go into face select mode, or you can press this button up here after which you can zoom in and select the top face, the front face, as well as the two side faces. Make sure you're pressing shift when you select so that you select all of them. Then tap X to delete and choose faces so that you're left with just the back and bottom face. Now you can press A to select everything and press G, Z to bring it up so that the bottom face comes in line with the base plane. Now you can scale this up however you want. You can do that in object mode or edit mode. It doesn't make too much of a difference. Let's tap S and just scale it up to maybe five times the original size. Now we can go into edit mode and just give this edge some sort of curve. And to do that, let's go to edge select mode by tapping the number two or pressing this button up here, selecting this edge over here and then pressing control B to add in a bevel. You can just bring in the bevel as much as you want but I'm actually gonna go with a very small bevel. So let's go with something like this and then use my scroll wheel to actually increase the number of cuts. So maybe I'll just increase it to about 10 segments and then I'll go ahead and confirm that selection. Now we're going to be using the UV coordinates for this object. And because we're using the default cube, the UV map is already unwrapped. However, the UV map is not going to be the type that we want and we're going to have to unwrap it again. I'll show you what the problem is as we actually start off with the texturing. So let's go into object mode, bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and then change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Then we'll tap N to remove this side panel and to actually see the changes, we're going to scroll over here till we get our viewport shading options and we'll choose the viewport shading of rendered. Then we'll select the default light and tap X to delete it. Now with our base object selected, we'll go ahead and play around with the emission strength and the emission color. First, we'll start by changing the emission color all the way to white. And now we're going to search for a noise texture. Now we want this noise texture to be controlling the emission strength. So we can just plug it in like that. And for more control, we're actually going to switch this using a color ramp node just like that so that we can increase the contrast. So I'm going to bring my black in a bit and my white in quite a bit. And that's enough contrast for me. Now I need this to be stretched and I want it to be stretched so that it gets stretched both like this as well as like this. So we have stretched lines that go down like that and lines that are going like this and each of these lines should be connected. So when it goes down, it should stretch like that. So we have to actually create that. And if we were to go ahead and press Control T with the node wrangler enabled to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes, you'll see that we are able to kind of get that effect if we were to just scale this up on the X axis. However, we're not able to see nice lines. So let's go ahead and also reduce the Y axis value to stretch it even more. Now you can start seeing where the issue lies. And that's because if we were to stretch this down to something like 0.1, it gets stretched a lot over here, but it doesn't get stretched that much over here. We can change that by playing around with the Z as well. So we'd have to stretch the Z along by the same amount that we stretched the Y. So let's go with 0.1 and 0.1 here. And to actually see this better, we can go ahead and increase the black even more so that we get nice white stripes. Now, if we're just to play with the Y location, you can see where the issue is. Because we're moving on the Y, we're going to have these lines move in this direction, which is exactly what we want. However, this is not going to be moving down. It's actually going to be randomly appearing on this screen because we're only getting a cross section of this particular slice that's going through the Y plane. So even if we try moving it on the Y, it's not moving nicely down as you'd expect. It's actually moving through that plane. So that's not the type of animation that we want, which is why we can't use any of these except for the UV. The UV coordinates are the only ones that we can use to get this effect to work properly. But the way the default UV is unwrapped creates this problem where we have the UVs going in this direction over here, but in a different direction on this plane. So to fix that, we have to go into edit mode, tap A to select everything, and then tap U and just choose unwrap. The moment you do that, it'll get unwrapped. And now when we actually move it along the Y axis, you can see how we get it to slowly move exactly how we wanted it to move. It's going down when it's coming through this plane and it's moving towards the Y direction when it's moving along this plane. So it's actually going in one single flow. So each line starts from on top, 
goes down, takes this turn and moves along this direction. So that's exactly what we wanted and we can get that particular animation by moving along the Y axis. So let's go ahead and just expand this a bit and create the loop for this particular section. First, we'll go to our output properties and we'll change the frame rate to maybe 30 frames per second. End frame, we'll keep it at maybe 300 so that it's a 10 second long loop. We'll change the output folder to wherever we want to save it. File format, we're gonna choose FFmpeg video. And the encoding, we're gonna change the container from Matroska to MPEG4 with an output quality of perceptually lossless. Now we'll press the back arrow to go to frame zero and maybe we'll start this off at zero itself and we'll instantly realize that if we just move this on the Y axis, we're not going to make a perfect loop. So to make this into a perfect loop, we're going to use a technique that we've used multiple times on this channel before. However, it's going to be slightly different. Normally we change the noise texture to four dimensions and we use the W slider. We're not going to be doing that. In fact, we don't even need the noise texture to be in three dimensions. We can change this to two dimensions so that it computes much faster. Then we'll bring this over to the side and we'll mix this noise texture along with another noise texture. So let's press Shift A and search for a mixed color node. Plug that in right here. Duplicate the noise texture and mapping nodes and make sure you're pressing Control Shift D so that the connection to the UV coordinates is also maintained. And then we can plug this into socket B. Now we essentially want to animate the Y values so that this goes from maybe zero to one, but this one has to go from minus one to zero. And I think one entire unit will be way too much. So maybe it can go from zero to 0 0.25 and this will have to start from minus 0.25. So let's go ahead and change this to zero. We'll change this to minus 0.25, and then we'll hover over this and tap I, hover over this and tap I, and the factor we're gonna change all the way to zero and tap I. Then we'll select all three of these nodes, come down here and go all the way to frame 300, after which we'll go ahead and make this a value of 0.25. The factor can go all the way to one, and this can become a value of zero. Then we'll hover over this and tap I, hover over this and tap I, and even here, we'll have to tap I. Then down here, we'll press T and choose linear so that we get a smooth loop. Now, when you play the animation, you can actually see each of these lines slowly go from the top to the bottom and move exactly the way we wanted it to move. And that's actually how you create this particular loop. Now we have to go ahead and fix all of the settings. Make sure that whenever you change the scale on any one of these, you change it for both of them. So I'm actually going to increase the scale to something like 10. And even on this one, I'm going to have to change it to 10. And now we have many more lines. Similarly, because we're using the UV coordinates, we don't need the scaling on the Z axis anymore. We can change that to one and it won't make a difference. I'm going to change the scale on the Y to maybe 0.05 instead of 0.1 so that the lines are a little longer. And I think that looks fine. Let's go ahead and start with the rest of the material. The first thing that we have to do is increase the brightness of this. So let's go to our render properties, switch on bloom and screen space reflections. Under bloom, we're going to go ahead and change the intensity down to 0.02 and we're going to clamp it at something like five. Along with that, I'm going to reduce the radius to five as well. Now I'll press shift A and search for a math node so that we can change it from add to multiply. And that will allow us to go beyond the value of one, which will make it nice and bloomy. So let's make this value something really high. Let's go with 1000. And it doesn't matter how high we go because we've clamped it down at five. By going to a very high value, whatever color we give over here, will get a little desaturated and will tend to go towards white which actually makes it look really bright, which is exactly what we want. Now, when we shift over to the view transform of AGX in the next Blender version, we won't actually have to do this because AGX handles bright values much better and we will get the automatic desaturation in a much more realistic way. Next, we'll go ahead and make this completely metallic so that the reflections are much better. Along with that, we can reduce the roughness from 0.5 to maybe 0.25 to make it even sharper. We'll take the base color and make it a complete black and I think that looks great. Now for the actual color, I want to use some sort of Voronoi texture so that we can get different lines to have different colors. So let's go ahead and press Shift A and search for a Voronoi texture. And we're essentially going to be using the color output or the distance output. It doesn't make too much of a difference, but we want it to also loop with this particular setup. So that's actually very simple to do. Let's plug this vector into the vector of the first Voronoi texture, press Shift D on the Voronoi texture and connect this vector to this vector. Now we need to mix these two together using a mix node. But remember when you duplicate the mix node, the keyframes will be omitted. So let's go back to frame zero, change this factor down to zero and then tap I, then go all the way to frame 300, change the factor all the way to one and then tap I. And again, make sure that you select this, come down here and with both the keyframes selected, press T and choose linear. Now mix this color into socket B. This color can go into socket A. 
and we need this result to drive the factor of a color ramp. So let's search for a color ramp node and then take this result, plug it into the factor and choose whatever colors we want. So maybe I want some sort of reds, blues and purples, maybe some yellows as well. So let's press this plus button to add in maybe two more stops. Now let's change this first stop color to a complete red. Maybe the second one can be a yellow. So let's select it and then make it a yellow and make sure that you keep it as bright as possible. This one maybe will go to a bluish color, maybe something like that. Let's again make this very bright. And this last one could maybe be a purple. So let's just change it to maybe this sort of a purple and that seems all right. Now let's go ahead and take this color and plug it into the emission color. And we might have to play around with the scales and everything. But first we'll look at what the preview looks like. And I think that looks great. Yeah, I don't think we need to play around with these values too much. Maybe a little bit more blue. So let's just take this blue and shift it over a bit to the side. And I think that'll work. Once you're happy with the way this looks, you can go ahead and select your camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, followed by R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then you'll press zero to go into your camera view and then press G Z to just lift it up. Once you have it up, you can go ahead and bring your cursor to this particular button, which is your object data properties or your camera properties. And then you can change your focal length down to maybe something really small. Let's go with 12 to make it nice and wide angled. Then go to your viewport display and increase pass bar two all the way to one. Now just press G Y and bring it in until the complete edges of your object goes out of view. So something like that. And of course you can move it up on the Z axis based on your requirements. So maybe something like this is good enough. If you actually zoom in, you can see that you are able to tell the edges of the bevel. Obviously that's not something that you'd want. So let's go ahead and select this go to object and then choose shade smooth. That way it becomes nice and smooth, which looks amazing. And that's actually all there is to creating this. Once you're happy with the way this looks, you can go ahead and press render animation. I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you enjoyed it, there are multiple attempts that I had to create something similar before. And one of them was actually this particular video that you can watch right over here. There we use geometry nodes and raycast nodes and a lot of techniques involved that will be very useful in other animations as well. So definitely check that video out. There are many other neon videos on my channel. If you like creating loops, motion graphics, check them all out because I post videos every single day. So there's definitely something or the other that you've missed out and the video is just waiting for you to discover them. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.